Skarner's passive is Energize. His basic attacks reduce the cooldowns of all his abilities. His cooldowns are reduced further if he attacks a champion. Crystal Slash damages all nearby enemies. If Crystal Slash has damaged an enemy recently, it will deal bonus damage and also slow enemies it hits. Crystalline Exoskeleton gives Skarner bonus movement and attack speed in addition to a damage blocking shield for a few seconds. If the shield breaks or times out, the speed buffs end. Fracture damages all enemies in a line and tags them with a mark. If Skarner then damages a marked target, he consumes the mark to heal himself. This heal is worth the most on the first mark consumed, and gradually less as you consume more of them. Skarner's ultimate is Impale. Skarner damages and suppresses target enemy champion. Skarner may then drag him around for a short time, dealing further damage when the effect ends. Volibear's passive is Chosen of the Storm. When Volibear gets dangerously low on health, he rapidly heals a percentage of his maximum health over a few seconds. Triggering this ability has a fairly long cooldown. Rolling Thunder empowers Volibear for a few seconds. While in this state, he runs faster when chasing an enemy champion, and his next basic attack will deal bonus damage and fling the target toward Volibear. I take Rolling Thunder at level 3 and max it by level 13. Frenzy passively grants Volibear a stacking attack speed buff with every basic attack he makes. Upon reaching max stacks, Volibear may activate Frenzy to damage a single enemy target based on Volibear's bonus health. This ability deals bonus damage against injured targets. I take Frenzy at level 1 and max it immediately. Majestic Roar damages and slows all nearby enemies for a few seconds. Minions and monsters hit by Majestic Roar are also feared, running around aimlessly. I take Majestic Roar at level 2 and max it last. Volibear's ultimate is Thunderclaws. When activated, Volibear's basic attacks trigger a chain lightning effect that damages multiple nearby enemies with each swing. Thunderclaws remains active for a moderate duration on Volibear before cooling down. Karma has two main builds, as either an AP burst caster or a support mage. She also uses a new secondary resource system called Mantra. Mantra replaces Karma's ultimate and is learned immediately upon spawning. Instead of learning an ultimate, her other three abilities all have six ranks instead of five. When she activates Mantra, the next regular ability she casts will have a bonus effect. Mantra may only be used twice before recharging. Mantra charges recover faster with cooldown reduction. Karma's first ability is Heavenly Wave. Unmodified, it deals damage to all enemy targets in a cone. With Mantra activated first, Heavenly Wave also heals yourself and your teammates in the same area for a base amount plus a percentage of their missing health. Second is Spirit Bond. Spirit Bond tethers an ally or enemy to Karma. Karma gains movement speed while the target gains or loses movement speed if it's an ally or enemy respectively. Additionally, units who move through the tether also gain or lose movement speed. Enemies who pass through the tether also take damage. When amplified by Mantra, the movement speed haste or slow is doubled. Karma's third ability is Soul Shield. Target ally gains a shield blocking a flat amount of damage. With Mantra activated, enemies near your target take damage the instant you cast the shield. Finally, Karma's passive is Inner Flame. She gains bonus AP for being low on health. This can allow her to cast stronger shields or heals, deceiving her opponents with more durability than is expected. Trundle is a tanky DPS champion, somewhat similar to Singed. He's also an extremely potent jungler and ganker, lending to a very powerful early game. Trundle's passive is Decompose. Whenever an enemy minion, monster, or champion dies, a percentage of its max health is converted into healing for Trundle. Now, let's introduce his active abilities. First comes Rabid Bite. Trundle lurches forward, biting his target. He deals physical damage and steals a portion of the target's attack damage for a few seconds. The cooldown is shorter than the duration, so you should be constantly beefing yourself up. Second is Contaminate. Trundle corrupts an area of the ground, and when he's on it, he moves and attacks faster, while also lowering the duration of crowd control effects like stuns and slows that affect him. His most signature ability is Pillar of Filth. Trundle creates an impassable pillar on the ground, which also slows nearby enemies, allowing you to block off passages or simply slow enemies for a chase or escape. Trundle's ultimate is Agony. Agony deals damage and lowers the target's armor and magic resist by a percentage which increases over time. Trundle also steals all those stats for himself while the buff is on. 
Gangplank's passive is Grog Soaked Blade. Every attack that Gangplank makes places a stack of Grog Soaked Blade on his target, up to a cap. Each stack damages and slows the movement of whoever's been struck. Parlay shoots target enemy with Gangplank's pistol, dealing damage. This shot applies on hit effects such as Sheen, Lifesteal, and Grog Soaked Blade. Parlay can also critically strike his targets. Additionally, if Parlay kills its target, Gangplank is awarded bonus gold. I take Parlay at level 1 and max it last. Remove Scurvy causes Gangplank to eat a bunch of oranges, healing Gangplank and removing all crowd control effects, such as slows and stuns that afflict him. Raise Morale passively gives Gangplank increased attack damage and movement speed. When activated, Gangplank gains an even larger bonus to these stats, and grants a smaller bonus to nearby allied champions as well. I take Raise Morale at level 2 and max it by level 9. Cannon Barrage marks an area on the map for a few seconds, slowing all enemies in the area and causing cannonballs to fall randomly in the area, damaging anything they strike. Omen of War causes Yorick's next attack to deal bonus damage and summons a Spectral Ghoul, which moves quickly and deals bonus damage. While the Spectral Ghoul is out, Yorick moves faster. Omen of Pestilence damages and slows enemies in an area and summons a Decaying Ghoul, which will continue to slow enemies around it. Omen of Famine damages target enemy, heals Yorick for a percentage of that damage, and summons a Ravenous Ghoul, which heals Yorick for the damage it deals. Omen of Death creates a clone of target allied champion for a few seconds. If the ally dies while the clone is alive, the clone sacrifices itself to temporarily reanimate the ally. Yorick's passive is Unholy Covenant. Yorick deals bonus damage on his attacks for each ghoul active. Additionally, all of Yorick's ghouls scale off of his own health and damage. Galio is primarily a tank, with a few splashes of burst magic damage and support. His passive, Runic Skin, converts his magic resist into ability power, meaning that as he becomes more resilient against spells, he increases the power of his own. Galio's first skill is Resolute Smite. He casts a projectile to a target area, damaging and slowing enemies. Second comes Bulwark. This is Galio's primary support skill, increasing his or an ally's armor and magic resist significantly. Additionally, any time that target is struck by a champion, Galio is healed. Righteous Gust is Galio's third skill. He deals damage to enemies in a line, and sets up a directional wind tunnel. Allies running in the same direction of your cast will run faster while inside it. Galio's ultimate is Idol of Durand. He channels a taunt while taking reduced damage. At the end of the taunt, he deals bonus damage based on how many times he was hit while channeling. Urgot is an interesting champion who starts out dealing crazy damage and controlling his lane before settling into a tank and assassin type role, relying on his ultimate and his team to kill important enemy targets. Urgot's passive is Zon Touched Bolt Augmenter. His basic attacks and first ability reduce his target's damage for a short time. First is Acid Hunter. He fires a simple physical damage missile to the target location and applies his passive. Terror Capacitor is second. Urgot places a shield on himself, which absorbs damage. Until it breaks or times out, his basic attacks and his Acid Hunter slow the targets he hits. While the slow is short, it can stack upon itself. Third, Urgot may cast Noxian Corrosive Charge. This is an area of effect nuke which deals damage over time, lowers armor, and most importantly allows Acid Hunter to lock onto the target. Now, if you cast Acid Hunter with your cursor over the target, it will always hit. Urgot's ultimate is the Hyperkinetic Position Reverser. He stuns his target and channels for a second, swapping positions with the target and slowing him, while Urgot briefly gains armor and magic resist. Evelyn's passive is Shadow Walk. As long as Evelyn has not recently dealt damage, received damage, or activated an ability, Evelyn is stealthed. While stealthed, she rapidly regenerates her mana and is undetectable unless she gets revealed by an enemy turret, vision ward, or champion. 
Evelyn can skirt on the edges of a champion's vision range, stalking them while undetected. Hate Spike fires out a line of damaging spikes that prefers to target Evelyn's most recently attacked foe. As her main damage tool, take Hate Spike at level 1 and max it immediately. Dark Frenzy passively grants Evelyn's stacking bonus movement speed up to a cap whenever she hits an enemy champion with one of her abilities. When activated, Dark Frenzy purges all slows from Evelyn and grants her even more bonus movement speed. Dark Frenzy's cooldown is reset whenever Evelyn kills or assists in the kill of an enemy champion. Definitely take a point in Dark Frenzy at level 4 or earlier, but max it last by level 18. Ravage strikes target enemy twice, dealing damage and granting Evelyn bonus attack speed. To further increase her damage, take a point in Ravage early and max it by level 13. Evelyn's ultimate is Agony's Embrace. Agony's Embrace hits all enemies in an area, damaging based on maximum health, and slowing for a few seconds. Evelyn also gains a shield that gets more powerful for every champion hit. Swain is a caster who specializes in taking down single targets and disabling enemies. Deathfire Grasp and Riley's Crystal Scepter are two huge must-have items for reasons I'll show you throughout this video. Swain's passive, Carrion Renewal, gives him a mana regeneration buff for a few seconds whenever he kills an enemy minion or champion. Unfortunately, we didn't have all his icons ready when I recorded this game, so a few of Swain's icons are images of Karthus. Swain's Q spell is Decrepify, or as we call it here at Riot, the Laser Bird. Laser Bird deals damage and slows a single target over 3 seconds. However, the spell is on a tether, so enemies can walk out of range to break it early. You may choose to max Laser Bird first, but I choose to max it second, after Torment. On W is Nevermore. You target an area on the ground, and after a short delay, targets hit by it are rooted in place for a few seconds. Because the only meaningful level up is cooldown, I keep Nevermore at 1 point until level 14. Torment is on E. It deals damage over 4 seconds, and also deals extra damage every second based on how much you've hurt your target. This bonus damage compounds on itself, so front-loading damage with Deathfire Grasp will heavily increase your damage output. As Swain's main damage spell, I max Torment right away. Ravenous Flock is Swain's ultimate. He transforms into a raven and sends out pets to nearby enemies. The pets also return to heal him for a portion of the damage dealt. Blade Surge is her first ability. It's a single target blink strike, dealing physical damage and applying on hit effects. If it kills the target, the full cooldown and part of the mana cost is refunded. Heaten Style is a passive active ability. Just by learning it, Aurelia will heal after every attack she makes. When activated, it adds bonus true damage to her attacks. Equilibrium Strike is Aurelia's third ability. It's a short-range, single-target nuke that normally slows her target, but if Aurelia is more damaged than her foe, the spell will stun instead. Aurelia's ultimate is Transcendent Blades. After activating it, she has a few seconds to shoot four daggers, which hit enemies in a line. These daggers also return health to Aurelia based on their damage dealt. Finally, Aurelia's passive is Ionian Fervor. When she is near enemy champions, crowd control effects like slows and stuns are shorter. Kali plays as a ninja assassin, dashing in and out of battles and dealing tons of damage. She's intended to be a hybrid damage slash ability power champion. As her passive gives her bonus damage on attacks depending on ability power, but also gives your spells lifesteal depending on how much damage you've built up. Mark of the Assassin is a great harassing and farming tool especially if you can trigger the bonus damage by attacking your target. Twilight Shroud is a must-have in larger battles, letting you dart in and out of stealth to stay healthy. Crescent Slash is the main ability I use in this game, which can steal lots of health with your passive and farm minions very quickly. Her ultimate, Shadow Dance, allows you great mobility and a lot of extra damage. A new passive. Holy Fervor causes Kale's attacks to shred a percentage of the target's armor and magic resist. This shred stacks multiple times and lasts a few seconds. Reckoning damages and slows target enemy, also giving Kale bonus damage against the target. The most notable changes to this ability are a significant increase to the missile speed and target slow, while lowering the damage amplification. Divine Blessing heals target ally and increases its movement speed. 
The remade version significantly increases the power of the haste but lowers its duration, while also increasing the cooldown to make her less sustainable in lane. Righteous Fury empowers Kale for a few seconds, giving her a ranged attack which deals bonus magic damage and splashes onto nearby enemies. The major changes in the rework are more damage and splash range, while decreasing the cooldown and AP ratio. Kale's ultimate is Intervention. Intervention completely shields target ally from all damage for a few seconds. This ability is unchanged in the remake. Udyr performs a few unique roles on his team. First and foremost, he is an extremely strong jungler with Phoenix and Turtle stances. Second, he is one of the game's best gankers, using Bear stance and the various buffs he has acquired. Finally, he is a tanky DPS champion with very little item reliance. Your goal is to disrupt your enemies and try to take down squishy targets first, saving your other enemies for last. As with most junglers, you should start out with the Golem camp when it spawns at 155. Note my positioning, allowing me to hit all the monsters at once with Phoenix Dance. Smite will deal exactly 560 damage at level 1, so get ready to kill Golem when it reaches that mark. Depending on your health, once Smite comes back up, you should try to grab the Lizard. As you reach level 3, Smite deals 646 damage. At this point, you can grab a rank of Bear Stance and gank with it, or rank Phoenix Stance to increase your damage output and jungle faster. The true power of Smite is shown when ganking enemies in the jungle. Normally, Shaco would have been able to survive the encounter by deceiving out, but without the mana he was so desperately relying on, I make short work of him with Lizard Buff and the various stances. I happen across Shen and Soraka, chasing Soraka away as Garen cuts her off. Shortly, Shen and Tristana start to gang up on me. However, our damage output is too great, and even as Shen tries to kill me at the end, Turtle Stance keeps me alive as I help pick up the kill with my team. Fiddlesticks' passive is Dread. All nearby enemies have reduced magic resist. Terrify inflicts target enemy with fear for a few seconds, slowing it and causing it to run around randomly. I take Terrify at level 4 and max it by level 13. Drain channels on target enemy, damaging it and returning a percentage of that damage as health to Fiddlesticks. I take Drain at level 1 and max it immediately. Dark Wind sends out a bouncing nuke that damages and silences enemies with each hit. I take Dark Wind at level 2 and leave it there. Crowstorm is Fiddlesticks' ultimate. After a brief channel, Fiddlesticks blinks to target location and for the next few seconds deals massive damage to nearby enemies, 